Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can prove that we do actually have some data sitting in each element of our array. In other words, we're going to output it, see what's in there. So just as a recap, in case you haven't been following the previous tutorials, we've created an array, an integer array, that can store up to 10 values. Then here, we've used the random class to generate 10 random numbers between 50 and 99 inclusive. Now I've already written the code here just to show a couple of different things. So the first one, if I just want to output a single value in the array and only one value, then I could just refer to the index in question. So I use my normal console.writeLine uh, method that we have in C Sharp to display things in the terminal. And then inside that, I have the identifier numbers, the name of our array, followed by which index do I want to output, or which value at which index do I want to output. I want to output the value at index 0. Then I've just done a blank line to separate that output on line 18 with the following loop. So I initially copied and pasted this loop from lines 12 to 15, and then I modified it ever so slightly. First thing we did was obviously change what are we outputting. But this time instead of going number zero, I only want to write one line, line of code that's going to be repeated 10 times. So I'm going to use my loop counter i to also match up with the array index. So that's why up here in the first line of the loop, I have set i to start at zero because the first element in the array is also index zero. Then instead of hard coding our i being less than or equal to 9, which was the upper bound of the array, I've used this slightly better method here called the numbers.length property. The length of this array is 10. And why? Well, up here when we declared the array at the very start, we set 10 in the brackets here. This is telling us we can store up to 10 integer values in this array. And that value in the brackets in the declaration is the length or size of the array. Now that is also meant I changed the relational operator from what I originally had up here. 0 through to 9 is 10 items, so i being less than or equal to 9 worked. But if i go i is less than or equal to numbers.length, my program will crash because remember the length is how many items maximum could I store in this array, and that's 10. So just go so long as i, start at i at 0, keep repeating so long as i is less than 10, is what this little condition is saying here. Now to run our code, let's go .NET run. And we'll see on that time, 59 was the first number that was generated randomly and assigned to index 0. Here's my blank line I just created with console.writeLine followed by 10 different numbers. Yes, 59 I can see there is repeated. It's actually the first and the last index of the array, but that's fine. Um, random number generator will do that from time to time. But you can see on each iteration of the loop, I've output a different value that's stored in a different index of the array. 